Thank you. Uh, greetings to all. I, I am very grateful for the opportunity that you have given me through this presentation. Today, I am going to present a new legal approach that I have worked hard for years. The legal approach is called the behavioral approach to, fun to fundamental rights. It's the first time that I present my work in English, so please be patient. Many years ago, I tried to explain why animals have fundamental rights. Today, I intend to explain why rights have animals in front of them. In other words, I intend to explain that it's not necessary to justify why animals should enter to the world of fundamental rights, since through the behavioral approach, it's possible to understand that animals are already part of the world that the legal system must regulate in a mandatory manner. It's an approach whose main objective is to make animals' rights feasible or practical. The first premise that we have to take into account to talk about this issue is that human beings, in other words, all of us, have legal privileges. We have a special category at the constitutional and legal level because we are considered subjects of fundamental rights. For example, we have rights to integrity, to life, to liberty, to work, etc. Nevertheless, animals like this puppy are actually considered as objects that can be used, that can be sold, and used under the property rights regime. If this torture were committed against a human person, there will be very serious sanctions that will affect the offender's freedom, because in these cases, we try to protect the right to integrity of a human. On the other hand, if this is committed against an animal, we will have different legal consequences, like a simple economic reparation. This because the legal system doesn't try to protect the integrity of the animal, which is considered as an object. In this case, what the legal system tries to protect is the property right of the owner and the good customs of society in general. For these reasons, animal rights are very weak. If we realize to consider, thing, to consider everything as an object except ourselves, leads us down the path of consumerism and unsustainable development. Thus, some serious problems like deforestation, the use of, of animals for food, animal experimentation, environmental pollution, or unsustainable development of some companies are problems that will be very difficult to solve if human interests overlap above all else. You will say, well, let's recognize rights in favor of animals. The truth is that it's not that easy. We can find some critiques against this proposal. Basically, I can summarize three critiques that represent the counter-arguments most often used against the animal's rights. The first critique says that these types of rights are inconsistent because fundamental rights are only for human beings who have qualities like reasoning, dignity, and intelligence. Therefore, since animals don't have these capacities, some people think that they don't have fundamental rights either. Second, it says that animal rights generate instability in the legal system because these rights are promoted by animal or environmental demands that are variable. If we think a little about it, we will realize that animal rights claims focus on domestic animals or mammals. However, very little is said about insects, microscopic uh, beings, or other whose protection have enormous difficulties. In third place, it says that these rights are impracticable. For example, recognizing the right to integrity of some species will give problems using animals for human purpose. It seems contradictory that an animal can have the right to integrity 
and at the same time can serve as food. Well, in order to overcome these critiques and make animal rights feasible, today I am going to present the behavioral approach to fundamental rights. The behavioral approach presents the legal system like a social system, like a great observer of behaviors that arise in social life. As you can see on this slide, the legal system fictitiously use a telescope to visualize behaviors, like taking a photo or playing sports, and says, these behaviors mm, don't seem to present them to me. However, other behaviors, like a murder or an international trip, they do seem relevant to the legal system. So the legal system decides to select these behaviors and make them present. Therefore, we can say that the legal system performs a task of legal selection. So, under what criteria does the legal system carry out the selection work? Under what criteria is one behavior selected, another excluded? Right here is the problem of the rights of other species. We currently have a subjective model which is performs this task of selecting behaviors by observing the characteristics of the subject. In other words, if a subject has some characteristics, he will be considered a subject of rights, and therefore any conduct that seriously affects him will be legally relevant. Let's see here. We will see that some historical characteristics like nationality, status, race, and religion have defined the subject of rights. If we had certain nationality, race, status, or religion, we could be considered subjects of rights. Currently, there is a more humanist model, but it is more of the same. It's a model focused on characteristics like rationality, free will, autonomy, self-awareness, and a concept that is used to encompass all of these, human dignity. All these characteristics are used as selection filters. In this way, if some species like this puppy doesn't have these characteristics, it is not considered a subject of rights. Given this, any conduct that affects their basic interests won't be legally relevant. This is the root of the problem, the subjective approach. It is what the behavioral approach tried to eradicate. In this way, the subjective approach is the center of the speciesism that leads us to exclude animals from the legal order of fundamental rights. Given this, what proposal does the behavioral approach bring? I can summarize them in four. The first proposal is that analyzing the characteristics of the subject should not be a criterion selection, but rather a regulation criterion. What do I mean? I say that the characteristics should not exclude the subject from the legal order but should determine which rights it can exercise and how conduct by conduct. This analysis of characteristics, ontological analysis, should not be used to exclude any being from the legal order, but to determine how a behavior is going to be regulated. However, we need to find a new criterion to select behaviors as legally relevant. Right here, <coughs> is the second proposal. <laughs> Adapt a new selection criteria. Currently, we have a lot of behaviors that are considered relevant by the legal system. Well, these behaviors must continue to be transcended because we don't want to destroy what currently protects human rights. However, it's necessary that we adapt a new selection criterion which not only explains how new behaviors should be selected, but also how behaviors have been selected has transcended through history. 
in other words, a cross-sectional selection criterion. Something that explains the rights of other species and human rights. So, the new selection criterion doesn't focus on the characteristics of the subject, but on the characteristics of the behavior. For a behavior to be legally relevant, it must be related to one of these notions. Survival, avoidance of suffering, freedom, and satisfaction of basic needs. You can tell me, freedom and satisfaction of basic needs are particularly generics. And I will answer that I am actually considering these notions to explain only human rights, since the rights of other species are are related to survival and avoidance of suffering, which are much more concrete notions. Additionally, this behavior must have a particular social importance. What do I mean? I say that the legal system is an observer of conduct. However, it isn't enough that the behavior occurs for the legal system to select it. It's necessary that we interact so the legal system can make the behavior visible and then select it. In other words, we are social agents that have a great impact on the legal development of fundamental rights. Historically, this has always been the case. The great conquests of human rights have been achieved from social movements. We have two concepts in relation to the socially relevant behavior. In the first place, we have the neutral conduct. What is uh, that behavior what is perceived as normal? For example, in ancient Greece, slavery was a neutral conduct because it was normal or natural. However, and here we have the second concept, at a certain historical moment, a vindicator arises, who is a person who reacts this behavior, who managed to become indignant about this behavior. In other words, a person who based on the notions of survival, avoidance of suffering, freedom, etc., needs to find other people to socially pressure to prohibit a behavior. You can see this issue on this slide. We have a vindicator who is this person in green. He is the one who, after a long struggle, achieved a deliberation on a social scale. To summarize, the selection criterion proposed by the behavioral approach is the following. The legal system must select all behaviors that cause social deliberation that is related to the basic notions of survival, avoidance of suffering, freedom, and satisfaction of basic needs. This idea can be synthesized in expression. Justice is not neutral. I mean that justice must remain active in the face of issues that are of great social importance. Justice can never ignore this type of behavior. The next proposal of the behavioral approach is that we must separate between what is selecting and what is regulating. This behavior selection is something intersubjectivity, abstract or relative. It's something related with social deliberation. In other words, it's, a, it's something variable. Well, once the behavior is selected, what the legal system must do is close the door on intersubjectivity, put away its telescope and regulate the behavior under objective criterion. What objective criterion is? It is to translate the subjective interest into legal institution. What was survival will now be the right to life. What was the voidness of suffering will be the right to integrity. What was the notion of freedom will be the right to freedom. What was the satisfaction of basic needs will now be the economic, social, and cultural rights. And of course, we have to consider the characteristics of the subject according to the first proposal explained above. 
The idea is to objectively regulate the selected behavior for which it's necessary to think about how to regulate it, considering the material content of these rights and therefore, of course, most important, the analysis of the characteristics of the subject or ontological analysis. In this way, the most important proposal of the behavioral approach is that uh, the ontological analysis, which under the subjective model is a selection criterion, as we can see the right side of this slide, moves to the left side, that is to be a regulation criterion that helps us determine what rights a certain species can exercise and how in a specific conduct. If you pay attention, under this model, we can achieve a legal system that, on one hand, meets social demands and social change in order to select new behaviors under basic notions like survival, the avoidance of suffering, satisfaction of basic needs, and of course, once the behavior has been selected, it can provide this behavior with a special regulation of an objective nature. Under this model, I believe that rice of other species are feasible. Before the last proposal, I want to give some examples to test this new approach. This approach <clears throat> tried to overcome the most recurring counter arguments against animal rights. Let's put some examples. Perhaps you can think that with this approach, a lot of behaviors can be transcended. What happens if a extravagant group tries to prohibit the fumigation of mosquitoes dangerous to humans? It's legally relevant. This approach has to identify one or two government agencies in charge of behavior selection. In fact, this selection task is already done by parliaments, congresses, and national or international judicial, uh, judicial tribunals. This is something that is already done. However, it's currently done under the limitation and problems of subjective approach that I explained before. Thus, for a conduct um, to be relevant, it must be selected by these state bodies, which ensures that the legal system is serious and coherent. That is a system that doesn't give from that doesn't give room for social wins. Let's take a second example about animals used for human purpose. What happens if a group of people try to prohibit the use of guide dogs? I could answer that this behavior deserves to be selected because it's related to possible suffering of one animal. However, after being selected, already in the regulation stage, when analyzing the characteristics of the subject, that is, the guide dog, I, it could be determined that this species doesn't suffer when working with people with disabilities. As long as the regulation considers the guide dog's own needs and interests without considering it as an object, but as a sentient being who can suffer and who tries to prolong his survival. Let's take a last example about the human consumption of animals. What will happen if we were to recognize the right to integrity of a cow? It seems incoherent to recognize the right to integrity of a cow when it's part of most people's diet. It seems a terrible contradiction. In reality, this situation is a problem of the current approach, of the subjective approach. In the face of this, comes the first proposal of the behavioral approach, which can respond to this critique. Let's look at this slide. The first proposal of the behavioral approach is that fundamental rights are criteria of regulation and administration of justice for a certain behavior. 
If we read any classic book of fundamental rights, we will realize that there is unanimity saying that fundamental rights are prerogatives naturally attributed for the human person to a, sub to a subject with exclusive characteristics. Fundamental rights are understood in a compressed form to a subject with certain characteristics. However, the revolution of the behavioral approach is that it extracts these rights from the domain of a certain species and positions them as criteria for the regulation of a specific conduct. In other words, fundamental rights are objective criteria that help the legal system to make a rational regulatory decision in a conduct. Fundamental rights, as seen in this slide, are the objective version of our subjective notions of freedom, avoidance of suffering, satisfaction of basic needs, and survival. Right now, we can respond to the example of the cow. We shouldn't oppose a subjective right of a cow to all behaviors that may exist in social life. This will give rise to contradictions and difficulties. In reality, it's necessary to take this right out of the sphere of a certain species and understand it only has a criterion of regulation. So, in a certain conduct, like the torture of a bull for fun, we must select this conduct because it is related to the suffering and survival of this species, species and because it's a socially deliberate conduct. Subsequently, once the behavior has been selected, it must be regulated. And already at this stage, since my point of view, we must uh, prohibit this conduct for the sake of the right to integrity and life and in attention to the characteristics of the subject, because it is species that to try to prolong its survival and avoid suffer. This is a very important aspect. Under this approach, it's possible that we will be prohibiting and regulating aberrant behaviors like the one I just mentioned, while we are perfecting the regulation of other more controversial behaviors such as the consumptions of animals for human purpose. The rights of other species, in order to be feasible, needs a system that, while protecting clearly aberrant behaviors, such as animal experimentation or animal torture, remains attentive and flexible to regulate better behaviors that are today controversial or positively neutral such as the use of animals for human consumption. This is something that is not unique to animal rights. It's something that has happened and is happening with human rights, which were not conquered overnight, but rather behavior for behavior. I believe that the behavioral approach can help us in our legal fight against animal abuse. To do this, it needs to be discussed and disseminated. Currently, this is an article from the Universidad of Rosario in Colombia, and I am finishing preparations to turn it into a book in Spanish. However, I consider it's very important that this approach can also be discussed here. And of course, I would love to collaborate with you to disseminate this approach in other language and achieve a better impact in academia. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions and comments to which I will respond to the translation provided by my colleague, Marcia. Thank you.